1 Kings chapter 18, verse 42. The prophets of Baal have been put down. God is the God. Unless you got a modern Bible. So Ahab went up to eat and to drink. That's a great atmosphere, isn't it? The prophets of his have been killed. I'll go eat and drink. I'll go to a restaurant and get something to eat. Great attitude. Shows that they were Jezebel's and not his. 41. And 41. And Elijah said unto Ahab, Get thee up, eat and drink, for there is a sound abundance of rain. Now it's been, we're coming upon three and a half years of no rain. We saw this in the tribulation period. And there's also a time which I don't understand. But in Israel, there's called the early and latter rain. It's the rainy season, a particular time in Israel. That if it comes too late or comes too early, it, it, it damages crops. And there's coming a time in the tribulation period into the millennium that after the, the lack of rain, there's going to be that early and latter rain in one period of time. And this picture, chapter 18 has been a picture of the tribulation period. With Ahab, a type of Antichrist, being ruled by a type of God as a woman, Jezebel. Now, is there anybody who knows who has a God that's a woman? And we ran the references in Revelation that matches this chapter 18. And Elijah said to Ahab, get thee up, eat and drink. He just killed his prophets. He has no attitude. He has no anger. For, he, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. And Ahab went up to eat and to drink. And, Ahab, and Elijah went up to Mount, to top of Carmel. That's a, you know, you ever just think they went to Jerusalem? Jerusalem's on a hill. They climbed this mountain. Moses went up into Mount Horeb. That's a hike. That's not like, boom, okay, one sentence, hey, I'm here. But we're at the end of this chapter, we're going to see a miracle of walking. But this is something, you know, climbing up Mount Karma. These guys were in great physical condition. Couldn't match any person today to play these people. And he cast himself down upon the earth, falls down, and put his face between his knees. Now, as far as I can see, the imitation of Satan in yoga this is called the child pose. And it's almost like what Elijah did. It's a copycat. Meditate with himself. No, Elijah's meditating with God, not himself. He's not trying to get no inner building. He's not trying to, you know, how many ID programs can I do after my services of yoga? And I was looking at some of the pictures, looking this up, man. It gave me a headache looking at those things. It gave me, you know, yoga, Bengay. For some of those positions they're getting into. Why not just call upon the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved? And take your feet and go out and preach the gospel. How about that? No aches and pains. And said to his servant, Go up now. Look toward the sea. And from Mount Carmel, this would be the Mediterranean Sea. I'm told that you have a great view of that sea. Do you know we're not going to go there, but do you know out of the book of Revelation that the beasts, plural, they come out of the sea? Look toward the sea. And he went up and looked and said, there is nothing. <laughs> kind of funny. You playing? What are you doing to me, Elijah? I went over there. I didn't see nothing. And he said, go again seven times. Now, I wondered that. Go, come back. Go Come back. I, it says, go and do again seven times. That walking back and forth, back and forth, or. And it came to pass at the seventh time that he said, This is servant, behold, there arises a little cloud. There's a cloud out there. Out of the sea, Mediterranean Sea, like a man's hand. That's kind of interesting. Was it open? Was it closed? Was it a fist? Now, Belshazzar, it says that he saw the fingers 
of a man's hand right upon the plaster. Kind of interesting. Study the fingers of God. Now, I'm not saying this is God's hand, but study it. God's finger wrote the Ten Commandments twice. God's finger stooped down the ground and wrote something to a bunch of men who brought a woman caught in adultery. And whatever he wrote, they, they took off. Study the fingers of God in the hand. It's the hands of God that had nails and still have those nail prints. It is the fingers that said one time that he made clay and spit to open the eyes of a blind man. It says one other place, and it's hard to understand what, what is what. There's one place he said he took his fingers and put them in his ears. Now, I don't know if it was the guy who was deaf or Jesus. I put one finger in his ear and one on his tongue. That one too. The fingers of God is something to study. Didn't we read yesterday in Psalms that they have mouths, they speak not, they have eyes. They I got a God that's got fingers and they move and they touch. He took the cup at the supper and handed it to him with his fingers. He took the bread and said, here, with his fingers. He took a towel and a, and a wash basin and washed their, their feet with those fingers. It's amazing. A man's hand. I'm not saying that's God's hand, but I go scripture, scripture. I say 85% chance that would be like God's hand. Clouds have something to do with God. Study clouds in the Bible. And he said, go up. Say unto Ahab. Go up. They're in a mountain already. Prepare thy chariot to Ahab. And get thee down. That the rain stop thee not. It is going to rain so much. It's going to, it's going to hinder traffic. This rain is going to come. It's going to wash away a lot because the grounds are already dust. They're clods. There's been no rain. It's going to be a washout. You get in that chariot right now and get going before you can't get going. And it came to pass in the meanwhile that the heaven was black with clouds. This is a storm. And wind. And there was a great rain. And again, at the end of the tribulation period, let's talk about the early and the latter rain together. 1 Kings 18 is, is more and interesting with Daniel and the book of Revelation. And Ahab rode and went to, to Jezreel. So he gets in his chariot, he books as far as he can go. I mean, as far as fast as he can go. Heading to Jezreel. And the hand of the Lord, here's the hand of the Lord, definitely, was on Elijah. And he girded up his loins, Elijah, and ran before Ahab. Now the story here is, the fact is, Ahab has a chariot with horses. There goes Elijah passing him. And you just imagine Elijah's not... Wow. He booked. So he'd be at Jezreel waiting for Ahab. Hey, what took you so long? Probably wouldn't even be breaking a breath or anything. He girded up his loins and ran before Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. And that's about plus or minus 16 miles from Mount Carmel to Jezreel. And the power of the Lord was upon him. Almost fast as, as a rapture call. And we read in the book of Revelation that dead bodies, three and a half days, the, the lack of rain is three and a half years. And boom, he, there, he's gone. They stood up and they left. Gone, rapture. Now in verse 45 marks the third and a half year that James talks about, that Jesus talked about. It's been three and a half years, no rain. And Elijah is over here. He's like, fill, fill uh, four barrels of water. Do it again. Do it again. It's been three years of no rain. It's been an interesting chapter to study. The tribulation. 
and it's only going to get worse.